In 1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. Good evening. I'm Thomas Ryan. I'm the vice chair of the East Ham 400 Commemoration Committee. Welcome to our Sunset Series. Uh, tonight, we're happy to have with us Bob Sheldon. Uh, he's been living in East Ham for almost 20 years. He's the president-elect of the uh, Cape of the uh, East Ham Chamber of Commerce, and he's a realtor with Remax uh, Spectrum. What else would, should we know about you, Bob? Well, I moved here in 2002. I was a, an engineer in my prior life. Uh, moved out here, and then I, I failed retirement. Uh, that first summer, I bought two kayaks and a small sailboat and a bicycle and a set of golf clubs, and by October, I was done. So I said I need to do something else. So I sell, sell real estate. Okay. Uh, so because you have your work with the Chamber of Commerce, I imagine you have, can have a sense of what's going on in the world of commerce in our town. So most of you who are watching this uh, uh, are familiar with uh, the general look of our town and how it has gone through the, uh, the uh, sort of quarantine period since the middle of March. So I'd like to first ask you, Bob, what would you like to say about how, what, what has it been like during the two months of quarantine? Well, it's been interesting because I, I feel there are some, uh, some uh, businesses that have worked, you know, done just fine. Others are had uh, you know severe severely handicapped by the uh, by the quarantine. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, although we're all affected in one way or another, I see some of the building trades have continued just fine. I think um, uh, some of the um, but some of the other ones, the, like the hospitality based ones, are, are really been hurting dramatically. Um, and then there's kind of an in, in between group that have managed to uh, to adapt uh, fairly well, although probably uh, at a financial uh, uh, detriment, if you will. I see uh, local grocery stores where they, you, you call ahead and they provide, you know, they come to your car with, with the food. But that can't provide near the revenue that they would have otherwise gotten. Again, uh, there's some, you know, real estate itself, uh, we went through a, a dead period, completely dead, uh, but it started to pick up these last few weeks. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a mix, but there's going to be some severe winners and losers, unfortunately, uh, as we move forward. So, in the uh period between March, uh, I know I went home on the 13th of March and didn't come out again for a long time. So since then, was tell me about the, um, I seem to have been joined by a lot of people from New York and Boston. Tell me, did well, that really happen? There's, there's, well, yes, it has, actually. Uh, what I see, and again, I, I see it because my street it doesn't have, it has, I'm the only year-round person on my street, but my street is uh, fully occupied. A lot of people have, have come up and decided since they could work from home, why not from their vacation home? Uh, the good news, and, and of course the fear was that they would you know, fill hospital beds with uh, you know, sick people from those other states. Uh, the good news is they've been pretty much behaving themselves. I mean, they've been uh, staying home. They've been uh, doing takeout and you know, just doing things that, you know, as they should have. And when they go out, which they, they do, they're on the bike path or on the beach, uh, pretty much uh, you know, obeying the various rules of the, of the um, stay-at-home order. Which, which is a good thing. That way, again, you, the hospital beds aren't all filled, and people are, like I say, pretty well you know, behaving themselves. So I meet some of them when I go to Stop and Shop or Shaw's uh, in the next town over, uh, but, uh, but they've been able to, the markets have been able to cope. They have. They, I think they struggled in the beginning because the, the demand wasn't, wasn't for uh, some of the things that, you know, the normal shelf stocking routines didn't, uh, didn't apply. Um, the, other, the other item, of course, is that I think some of their uh, uh, supply chains were disrupted also. And, of course, no, most notably, uh, good old toilet paper, which seems to be a, 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 <laughs> low, po a low point of our, uh, of our existence here. What, what a famous uh, episode that has been. Uh, so in the last, last couple of weeks, uh, weather's gotten a little warmer. People can say, hey, my God, Memorial Day is on its way. Tell me, how has it been the last couple of weeks now? Well, I'm sure you saw the traffic this past weekend, which was Memorial Day weekend. Traffic was significantly up. Uh, I'm seeing that, again, people are venturing out. Uh, the weather, 
Uh, the good news is the, uh, the, the CDC has said that you know, warmer weather is, 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 is essentially good for humans versus, uh, versus viruses. So we're seeing people venture out and they're going to the beaches and they're going to various places, but again, they're pretty much, you know, with the, with the face mask, they're behaving themselves. Um, I do see uh, an, an uptick on, on weekenders, if you will. Uh, they're coming out, but they have to go home because there's no hotels to stay in yeah. uh, or stay in somebody else's house. But for the most part, uh, they've, been, uh, they've been okay. Yeah, and I've noticed actually not just weekenders, but day, day trippers who are... There's some day uh, trippers, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so the governor uh, of our Commonwealth began a reopening Massachusetts uh, about a week ago with uh, several phase, th four phases, I believe. So how, how did, what's your perspective? The Chamber of Commerce, do you have an official position on that or do you have a well, general perspective on how that's gonna go? Or? I think, you know, other than the hardship for some businesses, I think, you know, we, you know, it's not like we have an option. I think for the most part, we support the governor in, in, in his plans, but again, we, we have to be careful as to Let's not be too, um, uh, too restrictive, uh, you know, far more than the, than, uh, than the data provides. Now, admittedly, the governor sits in Boston, which is a worse place to be than, than on Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. uh, the last few weeks, our, our um, incidences of coronavirus have been flat, uh, which is certainly good for, good for us. Um, and it also is a reason why some folks are coming down, mostly those day trippers. Um, but uh, as far as the, the Chamber of Commerce, I think, you know, in, in, uh, you know, Jim at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Jim Russo, has been fabulous in providing the, uh, the state held uh, guidelines and things such that people can apply for the relief that they need to. And again, many of the companies really do need to pro apply for that relief. But we're, we're starting to open up. I think by, uh, by the, the end of the, there's, there's four phases, but the fourth one is the new normal, if you will. Uh, by the end of uh, the phase three, if you bring us into that new normal, which current date would be July the 20th. I think other than the fact that some restaurants will have to have wider uh, spacing in, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, dining rooms, I think for the most part we'll feel like it's, it's pretty close to normal again. When will the uh, hotels like, you know, the big, uh, was the Sheridan, the big four points or the smaller? Uh, I believe uh, they're allowed to do that starting the, the 8th of June, which is only two weeks from now. Um, it's been kind of eerie to see no cars at the, at the, at the Sheridan, because yeah. even on slow times, there's a yeah, few cars. I think cars. We, all, we all notice that empty parking yeah, lot. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, it's, almost, it's almost scary, but, uh, but we're going to come out of that, and I think we're going to come out fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just hope the, uh, and I want the businesses to essentially plan accordingly. Uh, I think this is going to be a hold, uh, hold your own year, uh, if you can, and uh, try not to... Uh, let, let the, the virus uh, bury you, which is going to be, it's going to be difficult for some companies. And, and I, I think we all aware of, uh, that the beaches are stay, have been open and will continue to be open for visiting. Yes, the uh, beaches are open for casual use. Uh, the bonfires have been, uh, aren't going to be allowed, and there's going to be a bunch of things that the state is going to, and the federal government going to watch very closely. But on the other hand, I think we'll be able to use casually the, uh, the beaches just fine. Good. Good. So what does it mean to be the president of the Chamber of Commerce? What, what duties do you take on uh, pretty soon? Oh, my. Um, mostly, you know, Jim is, 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 is great, uh, and it's mostly support Jim in, in, in uh, what, he's, uh, what he's about uh, and to join the other, uh, the other Chamber of Commerces and some ventures mm -hmm. to, uh, again, encourage, uh, encourage okay. commerce. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And uh, for those of you watching, uh, come back every night at sunset time, 10 minutes 15 minutes rather before sunset. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Joanna Hollick and I'm the coordinator for the Sunset Series with East Ham 400. I want to start by saying thank you for your support of this project. As this project moves forward, we are hoping to involve local students and have already reached out to some students at Nauset High School. If you or someone you know is a local high school or college student who's interested in participating in this project, please reach out to me at jholic at gmail.com. We will provide you with a script to read that reflects upon the so-called first encounter between Mayflower passengers and the Nauset 400 years ago, as well as its significance and lasting impact today. We are excited to bring these videos to you each day this summer, 15 minutes before sunset. Visit www.easthamp400.org or the East Ham 400 channel on YouTube to see each of our videos as they're posted daily. Thank you.